ceremonies. And I believe every day that we live, it's an opportunity to give thanks to God. So we'll start off this session with a quick question. And I'm going to share my screen quickly. Our goal this evening is to understand how we can use data to help us even in our personal lives. It's just not limited to business, but in our personal lives as well. So I'm starting off this with this key question. Maybe if anybody is able to tell me the five things that you are in the last month of the year that you've spent your money on, just off your head. I'll take some few inputs and then we can proceed from here. So rolling back in the last 11 months, what do you think are the top five things that has taken away your money? I see Hubert's hand. Ah, um, yes, so the top five, I'll, I'll put it to top, top three. Okay. Uh, the first is mortgage. Okay. Second is car loan. Okay. Third one is my daughter. That one to the top money one. <laughs> <laughs> what does she do? Um, it's, it's, it's just, you know, childcare is expensive. Um, okay, yeah, of course. And, um, you know, uh, if you want to take care of these kids, well, it, it's, it's expensive, you know, extracurricular activities and all that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think when I, when I look at my budget and I read the top three, yes, she, she's a third on the list. Okay, so Hubert, while you are here, I just want to understand, how did you come by this conclusion? Um, so, it's, mm -hmm. it's, I'm, I'm also into data like you are. Okay. And, and I felt, why not apply it to my own life and mm -hmm. see where my money is going and so I can kind of plan and maybe, you know, um, invest in something else, you know, see where the money is going and then see where I can shift the money to in terms of investments. Uh, because once you know where your money is going, uh, you ask yourself the question, is this really important? Is this car really important? Or is this act this activity actually important? And then you are able to identify and move things around as 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 you feel, you know, uh, you know, you feel something is more important than another thing. I mean, in terms of priorities, because sometimes we lose track because we don't know, you see. So we lose track of what is most important, i.e. where we spend, spend our money. So I just thought it would be a good thing to have a project and see where the money goes by having just a simple spreadsheet to see where the expenditure was and then in terms of expenditure and then revenue. So that's, 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 that was my, 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 um, idea behind this whole whole I think fantastic so I mean I think you 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 re represent the typical middle class uh, there's if we all took time to even just write in a book every expense or every income it would sort of give us a certain insight about who we are for starters the things that interest us the things that we need to manage Okay, and then probably even look at the future. So I'm happy you're already doing this, but I also want to just project this to business. If you are doing a small business, probably you don't even have a laptop, but you just start recording income and expenses. Questions like these come up, but to be able to understand or get insights on what is taking away your money or what is bringing in money, you need a certain system that would first connect to the data source. And here, when I say connect to the data source, it doesn't have to be anything complicated. So all this analytics business starts with a question. The need to get an answer to a question. An example is what I just showed on the screen. Just trying to know the top five things that take away my money. Uh, where are my income lines coming from? Um, who is my best employee? All those key questions are things that we can get if we have data. We are in the data age. They say data is the new oil and it comes in different forms. We have data sitting in folders. We have data sitting on the web. We have data sitting in silos, database servers, SQL, CRMs in organizations. 
Now, we are generating so much data. That is the easy part. But the difficult part that companies are still looking for people to do is to be able to analyze the data and churn out insights. In fact, regardless of whatever system you are using, the process is the same. And because I am Microsoft inclined in that space, my examples this evening is going to take the Microsoft tools, but in any space you find yourself, you can still apply the system to be able to get insights from data, which basically is what analytics is. So from these data sources, we pull the data, we connect it, but sometimes it doesn't come in the shape that we want it. So I would like to relate it to even our personal finance. Um, maybe you have a bank statement, you have mobile money data, you have things that you recorded in the book, okay? Ideally, you would have to find a way to structure all these sources to make it easy for you to analyze. So you go through a process of cleaning the data, okay? And once you clean the data, if they are coming from many sources, um, there's a way you marry all those sources, okay, into what we call a data model. And I'll break it down as we progress. So I know um, not everybody is tech inclined, so I'll try and speak as much English as possible this evening. If you have any questions, please alert me as we go. It's going to be as interactive as possible. We analyze it. So analyzing is basically to make sure we filter out what is chaff, what is useful, okay, and then they say black and white is always very difficult to make sense of. So we now enter the realms of visualization, where we say with a picture, you can say a lot of words. Okay, so we visualize the data, we put it in some chart numbers, and we are able to get what we call insights. Now, this is the key thing that we are looking for when it comes to analytics, getting insights example and insight to help us answer the question that i just showed you okay these insights help us one to describe past events so as i said it's the last 11 months we are almost end of year so when you get insights like this it helps you get an idea of the things that you've been spending on so if it's internet you probably want to uh, consider changing suppliers or network if it is water or it is electricity or something like that, that insight would help you go back in time and then describe what has happened in the past. Okay, it applies at a personal level. It also applies at an individual uh, business level as well. So in the technical sense, we call this kind of analysis descriptive analytics, where you take the data, you go back in time to see uh, what happened, sort of. This same insight can also help you diagnose um, what probably went wrong. So here you are just being investigative. You go into that data and see, why did I spend so much on this one? Why did I not get so much income from this side? Okay, so that's another part of analytics that we call diagnostic analytics. Then there is the prescriptive analytics. If you have data, you're able to sort of even offer solutions on the things that you found as problems, okay? So in that space, we call that prescriptive analytics. All these are possible because we have insights. And then for advanced analytic systems, we are able to predict the future, okay? So if you do this for a while, even at your personal finance level, you have some five years of data and you want to um predict how next year is going to go fairly because you've done this well you are able to go into the future and then predict in the form of a budget or something like that okay now in this recent time there's this part that we call cognitive where we are just harnessing the power of ai artificial intelligence and machine learning so uh, we are reducing the level of human intervention in analytics so here data is guarded big data and the computer takes over the role of a human being to detect patterns and then we use it to make decisions 
So at best, this would be an overview of what analytics is about. But in the past, you realize that all this used to be served in one huge computer room. So if you needed any insights, you have to go into the computer room and then ask the IT professional to deliver this maybe over a week or two, you have to wait. But these days, even with your phone, you can get these insights easily. Okay, so we call these things that make it easily easy to assess insights, self-service. So on your laptops, you can use simple Excel to get these insights. On your phones, you can use some of these apps. Okay, so there's Mint, there's Tiller. Some of these personal finance tools can all give you insights. Okay, and sometimes it's even embedded in gadgets that we use. Okay, so this is what we are evolving into. And even in your small way, I'm sure you can apply analytics. Don't be bothered about the key terms. But the whole idea is that you have some data coming in, but instead of leaving the data in just black and white, you are taking advantage of these systems to get insights, to describe the past, the present, predict the future, solve problems, or even see patterns in your spending or whatever business that you are running. I'd like to take questions and feedback before I move on to my next. Francis, are we here? Yes, we, we are here. I think maybe we would want to proceed and then we'll take all the questions together. Fantastic. But if, okay. if, if everyone has a question, I'm sure they would treat their hand and ask. Okay. So um, if you want to take this as a career or um, this is something you want to take on at your business, um there are tools that would make this possible um you don't have to spend so much on a system that can give you insights in fact this um quadrant i'm showing you will list all the tools that you can use um you have uh, microsoft tools here so here you talk about excel power bi and all the power up tools there's also tableau Okay, there's Salesforce, Oracle, Sysense, and all these tools are available for anybody who wants to go into analytics. Okay, so at, in the Microsoft space, you can analyze this in the cloud or you can analyze it on-premise, but essentially the tools that we use are these tools. Okay, the SQL Server, Power BI, and you have a system that makes it easy to visualize it either on your mobile phone, on your laptop, or is embedded in your apps, as I said. The systems are different, but what runs through is the fact that you are starting from data, cleaning it, transforming it, and being able to visualize and get insights from that data. Now, I would like to come home because everybody has Excel. It's used by over 750 million, the last count, uh, people using crack versions and all those things. It's, it's accessible, that's the point. So if you are even starting as a small business, in this session, I'm going to show you some simple tricks that you can use, okay, how to lay out your data. If the data is already there, how do you, how do you structure it? What are some of the simple tools that you can use to do basic calculations, okay? So I would like to introduce you to the tools of trade. And in, in this case, we are using Excel because it's easily assess it, accessible. Data comes in Excel. Maybe it's one table, two tables. Okay, but what we do is that we use a tool that we call Power Query to clean this data. And then, as I mentioned, when you have several sources of data, you can connect and marry it using relationships and create a data model. The tool we use in Excel for this is called Power Pivot. I'm going to demo that in the course of the session. Now, when we create a data model, it allows us to use the key tool for aggregating and analyzing data in Excel, which is the pivot table. Okay, so the pivot table will take all the data you've cleaned, you've modeled, and then you're able to do summaries. 
So as an example, I can group my expenses by categories. Okay, I can group my income by my sources, whether from consultancy or from my workplace or from the sales that I do. The pivot table can help me do that. Okay, then when it comes to the visualization, you can use all these tools to create what we call a dashboard. Now, the good thing about Excel tools is that once you create the model or the system, you don't have to do it every time. When new data comes in, it feeds what you've done already. And then let's say if you throw in that of November, easily your dashboard updates and then you are on your way to getting insights. So breaking this down further, I want to show you that if you are laying out data in Excel for analysis, there are some key golden rules that you need to follow. So as an example, if I want to know the average age of members in this session, okay, I need to follow a certain structure. Okay, what is important is that I have some columns that contain my headers or fields. Um, so I can have one column that contains names. So all names will be in one column going downwards. Okay, all age, if it's age I'm interested in, going downwards like that. If it's salary that I'm interested in, it goes like that. Okay, so each column should have a single data type, name, age, salary, and department going all the way down. Now, when you list it like this, anything that you put in a row represents a record or an observation. So it is these records that you are going to pile up and then analyze. But in Excel, it is important that these entries are stored in a cell, one value per cell, to make it easy for you to analyze. So if data comes in this form, easily you are able to get insights. And I'm going to demo it with a very simple example that all of us can follow. And even in your personal finances, you can use it to get some insights. So basically, this has been an introduction to analytics, what it's about. If you want to use the Microsoft tools, particularly Excel, I've given you a guide on the tools that you can use, and more importantly, how you should lay out data to make it easy for you to analyze the data. So this is the presentation part, and because it's going to be interactive, I'd like to spend a few minutes to just demo how it looks like in, 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 in reality. So we'll switch over to a blank Excel sheet at this point and then see what we can get from our data. Can you see the screen, please? It's popping up. I'm sure we have in a second. Yes, it's fine now. So maybe you may okay. want to start the full gospel limited conversation again. OK. So let me start off with full gospel limited. And what Full Gospel wants to do is to be able to see basically whether the business is doing well or it's not doing well. And of course, the bottom line is money. So if you're analyzing data, it is about what you sell. And I'm saying that it can be as simple as just opening this blank Excel sheet and putting in the fields or the columns that you are going to use to analyze the data. And as I mentioned, in laying out the data, you have to follow the three golden rules. So if you are interested in dates, dates has to be in a certain column so that everything here is going to be dates, okay? If you're interested in knowing which items are selling, you dedicate one column to items, okay? Maybe you're interested in the price of the item the unit costs, okay? And maybe you want to also analyze by customers, okay? And then maybe where they buy from, location. So based on the key insights that you want to get at the end of the day, you would now break it down or unpack it into some of these columns to make it easier for you to take the data. So what I'm saying is, 
when I enter for the first customer, whatever information I enter for this first customer represents a record or an observation. If I go on like this for 100 customers, this layout makes it very easy for me to analyze it in Excel or even in Power BI or in the analytics too. The challenge we, we always have is that we don't pay attention to how we structure data, how we lay out data. And sometimes it makes it very difficult for us to get insights from it. Okay, so as an example, if let's say a customer walks in today and I put in today's date, person bought a Samsung phone. Okay, I sell it for 500 CDs. I bought it at 420. Customer is Francis. And his location is, uh, Francis, what do you say again? Pukwase. Becky Island. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so I, what I'm trying to point out is you should be very consistent in how you place the the record or you 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 put you put in the record so mm -hmm. if i do this for let's say 100 of francis's or 50 of francis's i am well on the good path to be able to analyze my data so if, if you're a small business this this is one good way you can start okay just making sure every customer that comes in every transaction that's the customer is involved in you you put it in in records we call it okay you put it in records now the thing is in excel when you enter data like this you've started off in a range okay so what we mean by a range is the basic units for data entry in excel is a cell and the cell is made up of a column and then a row so we make entries in cells and ideally, it should be one value per cell. Okay, but if you go like this and you enter into many cells, this kind of entry or whatever store you have is a range. Okay, it is good. There's nothing wrong with entering data in a range. But sometimes it is easier when you store that data in a table. Okay. Um, I'll try not to teach, but I just want to give you some insights if you are doing this on your own as a small business. Okay. So if you are using Mac or you're using Windows, if you lay data out like this, of course, you identify that these are the headers and then these are records or content. We separate this for a reason. Because if you go to insert and you insert a table, it makes it easier for you to analyze this data. Okay, so here I'm inserting a table. Okay, so if I insert a table, then this becomes more like an expandable database. So if tomorrow somebody comes in and I enter new data, and let's say the person this time around bought a laptop, you realize that automatically the table is expanding. I sold it for 3000 and then I bought it for 2,500, the customer is Yvonne, and then lives at Laboni. Okay, I could go on and on and on and on. But what is important is that I have this structured. Let me just number this well. And then we can do some few calculations from here. Um, let me just randomize this to make it easier for us to follow. Okay, and then let's assume that everybody is Francis in this case. So I've showed you how to enter the data. I've showed you how to store the data in a table. The next thing is that you can get some basic calculations from here, okay, using um, some of these simple um, functions in Excel. So as an example, if I want to know my total sales, if I want to know my total sales, Anybody help can help me. 
What's the best way to do this? I don't know. Give it on this up. Fantastic. So I can use the sum function to easily sum this. Now, the advantage you have using tables in Excel is that you don't have to do a lot of mouse work. Okay. Then is that when you enter data in a table, you convert your range into a table. The table has a unique button here. Okay. And through that unique button, you can name the table. So I can name this, let's say sales. Okay. The advantage I get is that anywhere in this workbook, even if it's um, in a summary sheet in a new worksheet, okay, I can do my calculation here. Okay. So I can sum the sales table. Okay. And then, um, of course, I'm missing something. I have to go back and get quantity so that I can get my revenue. So let's insert, I can easily do that using alt IC. So this represents my quantity. So again, let's randomize this. So rand between, let's say one to 20. Okay. So another advantage that tables give you is that when you do, you add on any field to this. Okay, again, that's database or that table expands. Okay, so my revenue can simply be my price times my quantity. Okay, and then I have this. So now I can do Hubert's calculation. Okay, so my total sales or my total revenue can be equal to sum. I call the name of my table. Okay. When I call the name of my table, this table responds. And the advantage is that I can do this in any part of this worksheet. Okay. So I'll bring my square brackets. So a square bracket is located after your letter P. And that gives you access to all the fields in this small table that you created. Okay. So I can get my revenue and then I'll just easily get my sales like that. So first level calculation, if you use tables, you name your tables, you can easily have this on standby, okay, to help you monitor your sales at every point in time. Okay, now, as I said, the reason we like using tables in um, structuring data in Excel is that Again, if I bring in new data, this calculation that I have done on standby, okay, would automatically adjust if I add new data. So you realize that this new data came in and then this automatically updates. Okay, now this is first level calculation. However, you can't be dealing with data that is just not 17 rows, but let's say you've done this over time, um, over 11 months and um, you want to get insights into which product is selling well, which location is doing well, okay? So at this point, you need to transition from just a simple table to a pivot table. And the pivot table will help you summarize the data, aggregate it at high level so that at least you can make sense out of it. So I'm going to switch to now that you are comfortable with tables, at least if I come here, you know that this is just an expanded form of what I showed you. Okay, so this is already a table. It's called transactions. And as I said, it can be as simple as just making sure you record this. Transferring it from your book is also allowed. Okay, you have every, so it makes it very easy to analyze. Now, when you want to insert a pivot table, in Excel, this is just located here. And because this is already a table, you can insert your pivot table from this point. It reads that you are taking it from your table. You click OK. And you have all the fields of your table listed here. 
And again, this is why it is important that you start off building your tables, having these columns in mind, because they sort of represent the ingredients you are going to use in your analytics. Okay. So look at a pivot table as say a small table or a summary table. Okay. It looks something like this. Whatever report you are going to create, you are going to have a certain number. So in, analyt in analytics, there's always a value we are after. It could be sales, it could be cost, it could be the number of times people walked in to buy from us. Okay, these we call values. Okay, so if I take values, I may be interested in let's say revenue. Okay, or cost. Okay, this is a number that I can analyze by let's say location, gender, product. Okay, any how you can dice or slice or turn around this number to give you insight. Okay, so if this was an English class, let's say the adjectives that you use to describe this value. Okay, I mean, in, in, in the data world, we call these things dimensions or attributes. So anytime you have these tables or these columns, I must say, these columns or fields listed in this order, the real separator is that you are looking at dimensions and attributes against values. Okay, so a pivot table allows you to take a certain value and choose to analyze it by any of these dimensions that you have here. It could be by date, it could be by customer, it could be by city, it could be by location. Okay, and if you look to your right, you realize that there are four field areas that would help you create that pivot table. Okay, so if you are starting off, it's always good to start off with that number, whatever number that is. Okay, so you can start off, let's say, with quantity. So quantity comes in here. So you realize that for all the things I'm selling, it's 5,963. Okay, how much of this was delivered using this delivery mode? So I can, in this case, what I'm trying to do is I'm taking the quantity which now represents a value. And I want to analyze it by delivery mode. Then is, this delivery mode can come sitting as columns on top in this yellow area, or it can come sitting in rows by the side, analyzing this. If I take you back to, um, the data, the data set, you observe that in delivery mode, these are the type of deliv delivery modes that we have. Okay, we do two to three day, we do five to seven day, we do express, we do pickup. Okay, so I want to see the volumes that we did per each of these items that we have here. And this is what I can put in either the row or the column to give me some insights. So a pivot table allows this. So if I come here, I go back to my pivot table, I can now drag delivery mode into rows like this. And easily, I can now break down this 5,963 using these delivery modes. I mean, this is a very simplified case study, but the idea is that you can create as many of these pivot tables as possible. The idea what you, what you are looking for is to be able to get something like this. So I'm gonna be building you towards the final stage. So you can get something like this where you can now see at high level how much you've sold in terms of revenue, how much it costs you, okay? The profit that you've made you can even calculate your profit margin and then Let's say beyond these high numbers, you can also visualize your revenue, cost, profits, profit margin by month. So if you've been following, you realize that all these are driven by pivot tables. And these pivot tables are sitting here. 
So that is the pivot table for revenue. That is a pivot table for cost, pivot table for profit. And then I can use this to now visualize in this simple dashboard. Okay, so in Excel, the process can be this simple. It can also be a bit complex, but point is that if you have your data laid out properly, if you enter it in a certain structured way, applying all the three golden rules, you can use pivot tables to analyze it. The times when you need Power Query and Power Pivot to do some work is when the data is not clean enough. So you go into Power Query to clean it. You have many sources of data. You can use Power Pivot to put this together. And then in the end, you can create a dashboard like this. It is not only for sales. If probably Hubert wants to take the personal finance to another level, he can also create this um, simple financial dashboard. Okay, that would give you again insights on income expenses, profits, your cash at hand. If you are selling some products, um, you can see the top five products here, bringing in income, the top five expenses here. And then you can also visualize each account, okay, over the month. Okay, so in the end, your goal is insights. In the end, black and white is very difficult to make sense of. But with a simple tool like Excel, you can use some of these tools to create simple dashboards like these. Okay, the good thing about this is once you create them, it becomes dynamic. If new data comes in every time and you update your source, okay, so again, this table is what is feeding that. Okay, it goes through your pivot table and then you can now get it in your dashboard in real time. So I would like to round up at this stage and then probably use the rest of the minutes to take questions if there are any. Wonderful. Thank you so much, um, um, Bernard. So I think we will have a few minutes. I see already, um, you bet your hand is up so you, you can ask questions. But if you have a question, uh, you can put up your hand or you, you can and, and ask. Uh, if you're in an environment where you can speak, you can also type your question in the chat box and uh, we can pick it up and uh, Bernard will take it. So, Hubert. Okay, uh, Bernard, uh, thank, thank you very much for the very insightful um, explanation. I think it's it was really done well. Um, I don't really have a question. What I have is, you know, in terms of links, I got your, I mean, Mensa, Mensa was the one, Mensa Saniaja was the one who said, oh, Hubert, you are into data. So there's a, a gentleman who is presenting today. So um, I would like to, you know, kind of collaborate with you in terms of what we do. I'm more into um, Python and R. Um, yeah, I use I use Power BI as well. Um, SQL, you know, it's it's you know it's it, these things they kind of work hand in hand. So um, it would be nice to to have your details and and you know speak to you and you know work with you and see you know what we can do together. Yeah. So fantastic. Um, I, if you don't mind, I would I would take your details from from Mensa Seniaja. Thank you very much. Sure, Hubert. And I also like the fact that you brought in R and Python, which are very good tools. Analytics, I forgot to mention that. Um, you realize that even beyond these packaged software, Power BI and Excel, Python is able to go beyond, uh, it, it sits on a lot of platforms. And yeah. if at back here in Finance Close Up, we are running a program for um, selected ladies in okay. Excel and Python. Oh, wow. Um, yes, called Excel Our Girls. Okay. So, uh, we appreciate the fact that these tools together, Excel and Python particularly, can really give a lot of meaning to analytics. So for those who are considering a career, it's probably one area you should look out for. So Chase Hubert for more insights into Python. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I, I see Mensa's hand is up. Mensa. Yes. 
Thank you very, very much. Um, apparently, I've been following you on LinkedIn for a while. I didn't know you were the one coming here today. Small world. Somehow, somehow I haven't, I haven't seen of, or I haven't seen your tutorials in a while. I checked a few minutes ago, and four days ago or so, you posted some other free tutorial. I need to check my settings. Why I don't see that anymore? Um, thanks so much. There's the gentleman in my office who earns almost my salary because I don't know how to do these things. And in a few minutes, in less than 30 minutes, you've taken us through <laughs> these things. Every time I, I ask questions as to how to get this done, I'm like, oh, don't worry, you know, you're above this one at this time, you know. Apparently, this gentleman knows that if I learn how to do this, he won't have a job anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, thanks so much. I, 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 would, I don't know if you can just, I can take you a few steps back. On okay. Just two areas. Okay, that's fine. I noticed fine. that when you did a spreadsheet, you mm -hmm. put the data in, you, you, you said uh, you're able to convert it into a table. You said this is how you do, this is what you do to create a table. Um, I missed that part. And then I want you to take us through again how to just convert this through to the pivot table to build, to get some of the data you, you did. Just a simple step. You have your data converted into ta simple tables and then how to move it to the pivot table side to input your data. Okay, so rewind um, just in just two minutes, I'll get this done. So what I'm saying is when we store data, yeah. um, we store it in, in a range, at least at the Excel level. Um, a range is just a collection of cells. So I'm going to convert this back to a range so that you know that you can reverse the process. So this is now a table. But if I go into the table menu and I convert this to a range, at this point, I have a range because that table menu is no more here. And that basically okay. is the difference between a table and a range. If you so start- So we've been doing like, oh, I've done a little table. It's always a range, not a table. It's always a range. It's okay. always a range. Uh -huh. So oh, in, thanks. yes. So in, in, in our typical class, I say a table is only a table, only when you see a table. Okay. Uh -huh. So if you don't see a table here, then you are not working with a table. And I've already said the advantages of tables. It's expandable. You can reference it in any part of the workbook and all those things. So simply, once you stand in this structure, you can go to insert and then you see insert table here. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. If it's structured like what you are seeing, you can e easily press control T. So control and T together. Okay, would also do the same thing of converting that range into a table. Okay. Uh -huh. But the thing is, before you even convert to a table, there are some few things that you need to consider. The thing is, there shouldn't be any unrelated item. Example, people put titles here, like sales data, mm -hmm. on top of the table. Ideally, what should begin the table is just the headers. So if you have a title here, it's advisable to, let's say, space it out, okay, so that the structure sits without any disturbance, either data on top or data on the side. If it's like this and the headers begin it, you can easily do control T and then you convert this into a table. So you realize that at this point, when I step in, I now have this table design here, which means I'm now working in the table and I can name it sales. Okay, so once I name it sales, then it means I'm good to go. I can now use the sales for all my calculations. To insert the pivot table, because this is already a table, okay, insert, you stand in there and then you go insert a pivot table. Okay, so once you insert a pivot table, it picks the whole table as you have it. If you didn't have a table, you may have to use a mouse to select the range, which is not ideal. Because the, what we want to do is when new data comes in in subsequent months, we don't have to come and resize what we use for our pivot table. Okay. 
Uh -huh. So once it takes this table name, it's, it's, it expands with it. When new data is added, it reflects in your pivot table and all that. So once I do this and I click OK, what I get is the pivot table, which essentially is uh, going to give me summaries. OK, so you realize that pivot table breaks down all the components of my table. OK, like in ingredients on the kitchen board that you're going to use to prepare food. OK, right. and I'm saying that start off with your numbers. Your numbers should be in values and then you can use any of the other things as dimensions, either in rows and columns to describe your data. So that's that is a summary of tables and pivot tables. Brilliant. Right. Thank you. Will you click a couple of, uh, will you take a few boxes there so we see what comes out of the table? Okay, so here I have, let's say unit costs. If I take unit costs, I, I check this. Excel by default knows that this is a number. Okay. okay, there are two ways to populate the pivot table. Either you check the boxes or you hold and drag to these field areas. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. so if we check the box based on the content, Excel would now interpret what is in there. So if it's, it's the number, it automatically takes it to a number. Okay, so as I said, it's always intuitive to start with the number and then you decide how to analyze it. So to analyze it, you can bring any of the attributes, okay, in here. So example, I can bring location to rows. And here I have Laboni and Pukwase. I now know that of the 5,206, this much came from Laboni and this much came from Pukwase. So that's how we do it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I need to enroll into, into a formal class. I don't want to drag the whole class. <laughs> Thank you. So, so if symptoms persist, contact. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Francis, Francis, like, Francis will bring you to find a school's help. <laughs> yeah, but I think Bernard, it's been very good. I don't know if there are any questions. Uh, uh, if there are any more questions, uh, I, I think in the chat box, people were asking questions about the recording. We'll try and put it together and then uh, uh, share with you. Hubert, you have a, another question or comment to make? Uh, yes, I have a question, please. Um, Bernard, um, in terms of um, data, um, so how do you often get your data? If, say, for example, you want, you know, you're working for a government agency, how easy is it to get data? It's, it's one of the challenging things we, are, we have in this country. Okay. Um, but we try. Um, then is, Excel has built in tools that can connect data from many sources now. So if you go to data and then you get get data, um, even from file, you realize that if you get a data, let's say in PDF, yeah, okay, in native Excel, you can extract that data from PDF. You can do that. I, I, I did some work recently on the population census and okay. I, I extracted and analyzed the data using PDF. Okay, you could also use um, online from web. Okay, um, there are also third party tools um, that you can use. Um, there's one that I use to, to, if the data is really bad and it doesn't come in, in a form that I can use Power Query, uh, it's called Extract Table. It's an AI tool. So it takes a picture and analyzes it and then it dumps it. But these are all options that you can use to bring in data. Otherwise, you probably have to go into their office and then uh, get it manually, which is what and, we normally do. Oh, okay. And Ben, finally, how is the job seen in terms of, of data analysts, you know, data scientists in, how is it like? Is it, is it, is it something that is very, is, is it growing? Is, is it? Indeed, expanded? it is. Indeed, okay. it is. Um, I mean, Ghana is waking up, but if I keep saying that if you go on LinkedIn, I, I know a few friends who are working remotely, just okay. analyzing data uh, for companies. Um, if you position yourself well, your profile <laughs> reflects that you are somebody who can do this. People come after data analysts, remote roles okay. often. Uh, so even if it's local or global, it's, it's something that is evolving. And I would encourage everybody, even if you are doing accounting, there's an area of accounting called accounting analytics. You don't have to wait till end of year to do your numbers. Okay, you can be building 
these insights as we go. Okay, so it's it's actually evolving and I'll encourage everybody to embrace it. There are tools that you can use, Python, like you said, yeah. R, Power BI, Excel, all these are available for you to start your career. Okay. Thank you so much, Ben. I think there's a comment in the chat box, Mensa is saying ability to analyze data using these tools is, is a really important skill which managers are paying for. I encourage those who can to get further help as this will be invaluable to career growth. Thank you, Bernard. Uh, I think, Mesa, I, I am paid to do a lot of that, so <laughs> <laughs> I can relate to that. And uh, uh, I think for me, data analysis, Hubert, these days is, is really becoming relevant for big companies in Ghana because they are seeing the insight it gives to businesses and how it's helping businesses to grow. I mean, previously, we are just... We're just taking decisions by gut feelings and other things, which is good. But now people, are, businesses are becoming more insightful and taking very well, well more informed decisions. And, and Bernard, I'd like to also say that even for business persons who have connected today, I mean, I'm sure some of the things you are showing, people are like, hey, Charlie, these are all over the place. But I think the most important thing is that we understand that no matter how small or big our business is, it's important that if we can pay for somebody to give you this data, please do, and 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 drive your business with information. I know data is becoming the new oil. So, God bless you so much, Bernard, for being a, a very important tool to us this evening. Um, before you go, uh, we would like to share a word of prayer for you, <laughs> as as full gospel business men fellowship. Um, uh, so I would like to call on Mensa to, to share a word of prayer for, for Bernard. Uh, please stay on with us. We have a few information to share with you just before we go. So Mensa, do us the honors and share a word of prayer for Bernard. If you give me the mic, I'll ask more questions so before prayer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bernard, I mean, I'm so, so happy that I can connect with you here and actually have the chance to pray uh, with you or for you because I've been following you virtually on LinkedIn for a couple of years now. So uh, thank you. Remember that I prayed for you and when you get bigger and bigger. <laughs> Let's pray. <laughs> well noted. <laughs> Can we pray? And I want to encourage everybody who's been blessed to also silently say a word of prayer for Bernard and his team. I want to believe he's got a couple of friends uh, on the platform right now. Team who are support. So let's pray for him and his business and his team. Father, I thank you very much for our brother Ben being watching for, uh, for his life. Thank you for the skills and abilities you've uh, invited him. Thank you for blessing him with all these skills that he so generously shares. Uh, whenever he's called up, I see his generosity on LinkedIn, giving free tutorial uh, week after week and after week, and he's been very consistent at the Lord shares freely can you just bless him more according to the principle of giving and receiving lord make him stand out in this area of analytics let him be a household name and a corporate name let him be a top brand in corporate Ghana and in Africa and the world at large for his skills and knowledge that you've put in him lord on top of that lord bless him with good health Bless him, O oh Lord, with wisdom. Bless him with, uh, with financial blessings, O oh Lord, and security. Bless him with all that he's been asking for. May you build him a, good, a great family, a great business. Bless him, O oh Lord, noon, uh, uh, evening and night, O oh Lord, in everything he does. Just bless him. Father, I pray that his business or company or anything that he lays his hand on, that God, you would expand it and grow it that the blessing would reach uh, beyond territories uh, unimaginable to himself. Father, we thank you for all you're doing in his life. In all his doings, O oh Lord, we give glory to you. Let him remember that ultimately you are the one who receives the glory. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, so just, just before Powerful. we take other announcements, maybe Bernard will just give you an opportunity to maybe how people can follow you um, if they want to have further conversations with you, LinkedIn, okay. YouTube. Yeah. Okay, so um, we are available. Finance Skills Hub is very present online. So 
anytime you go online, Finest Skills Hub, that's the uh, website is Finest Skills Hub. So all the details about our program, our community, our projects. So as I mentioned, we have two main projects. One we are running with the Ghana, um, University of Ghana Business School, where we teach students analytics and financial modeling. And then our Excel Our Girls project, where we teach selected ladies Excel and Python. All these are pro bono projects. We believe in giving back to the community. Aside that, you can also follow us on LinkedIn. So we have a very active LinkedIn um, page where we share insights. So we share tips as well. So now just, just not the videos, but you get insights on ways to work with Excel and other tools as well. And then on WhatsApp, um, we have over a thousand people on our broadcast list. So we share um, daily tips and videos as well directly on your phones. Okay, so for those who want to connect with us on WhatsApp, the number is 0244-782356. So if you send ad as a message, we'll add you to the broadcast list so that when we send the videos, you receive them directly. Uh, people have been on the broadcast list for over five years and they've benefited a lot. So that is the WhatsApp number. So you can use any of these channels to connect with us and we'll keep the learning going. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Bernard. And thank you all for joining us this evening. Like I mentioned before, this is Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International, the Golden Executive Chapter. Um, we are a Christian business fellowship and we believe in using our testimonies, our life testimonies uh, to, to, to draw men and women to God, like you had. Uh, beyond that, we also believe that God requires us to be excellent in our marketplace. That's why today, for instance, we are sharing on Excel uh, using data so that even as we find ourselves in the banks, in our businesses, we can excel and by so doing, we have the opportunity to even attract men and women to see that indeed God is also raising men and women of excellence. So if you are joining us here for the first time, um, we'd like to connect with you. We'd like to get to know you. Uh, there's a link we just dropped in the in the chat box. Check, chat box, just click on it. Uh, you are a special guest. Uh, click on it and we'd like to get to know you. And if possible, you could be a member of this wonderful Christian Business Men's Fellowship International.